it was a ranch and farm, you know, I was moving irrigation lines, taking care of animals, doing feed work. We were outside smoking on the porch, so we heard it pretty immediately. And like, we nearly dropped our cigarettes because this was so loud. This was terrifying. It was off the road a bit, and there was a cow in the middle of the road. You could tell that it hit the cow, and the cow was dead now, and there was blood coming from it. We rushed out there. Um, it was awful. Uh, this this uh, this little like outback had had hit a cow, and it was crushed. This outback was destroyed. I mean, you know the story. He, he didn't end up making it, right? I went out back because I thought I saw something maybe. I don't, I don't know, I, I checked in the trunk which had just been burst open. I saw a sort of orange envelope, right? Like you get at, at casinos. Well, I, you know, I, I took it. It was full of $60,000 cash. But we were standing off to the side watching everything get cleaned up. An ambulance had come. And Parker comes over to us looking kind of anxious, and he pulls out an orange envelope. We thought we were going to be scot-free. We thought it was a victimless crime. This was a dead man. So we got back from the crash and decided to count the money. And while Lyndon was counting, I happened to pick up the envelope, and inside was a receipt, and it said $60,000. But by the time all the money had been counted, we figured it was $25,000. We thought Parker might have something to do with this, so we asked him about it, but he didn't say anything. Later on, we looked through his room, and we ended up finding the other $35,000. I'll be honest with you. These, these were hard times. I was making nothing working at High Country. I was still in debt, and this was going to clear my plate. So, so right there, while Jensen and Lyndon were looking for signs of life on the driver, I took what I needed. 35000 Lyndon just flipped the fuck out and said he was going to kill him. He tore out the door behind Parker and chased him to the stackyards. I waited a little bit before I followed him down there. For my brother, it was, it was a brother doing his brother wrong. It was, it was personal, it was familial. Lyndon didn't say a word to me. He took the money from my hand where I held it. He took the money and he shoved me off. Lyndon was kneeling down beside Parker who was flat on the ground. I think he was crying. I saw him stand and walk around in a circle for a bit. Then he just collapsed and started throwing up. He took the money out curled it up in Parker's hand and started running for the driveway. Lennon must have thought he was dead. I remember walking up to his body and he wasn't breathing, but I could feel a pulse. I called an ambulance, and before they took him to the hospital, I took the money out of his hands. I was going to give it back to him when he came back, but he never did. I never saw him again. I woke up in the hospital with two broken legs, no money, and no brother. I called my father, and he picked me up, and, and for a while we looked around. But in the end, you know, we, we realized Lyndon didn't want to be part of this family anymore. He had enough of us. So he took the, the $3,000 and he left. You know, I've never seen him since. <laughs>